Many black Americans are unhappy about the news reporting on our brothers and sisters in Africa. To combat this distortion, Black Journal decided on an African bureau. It made Black Journal the only program with a permanent roving film crew on the continent of Africa. At a reception in Washington, attended by government officials and African ambassadors, that announcement was made. I would like you to meet uh, Black Journal's executive producer, Mr. Tony Brown. I do not want to make any type of speech. I would simply like to say we're very happy that you came, and we certainly hope that in the ensuing months we're able to report to you, the most important people of our audiences. The bureau that we're going to establish in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, uh, will be headed by a person who has been uh, very concerned about Africa. <clears throat> At a time when many of us who during the era of the Negro were not involved in blackism at all. And I would like to, at this point, introduce to you Brother Horace Jenkins. Horace. Internationally, brothers and sisters, this is Horace Jenkins speaking to you for Black Journal from the capital of the Pan-African world, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie arrived from the southern provinces of Ethiopia in order to address the Council of Ministers of the Organization of African Unity. Haile Selassie and the people of Ethiopia are very much the symbol of African strength. In 1963, 31 leaders of independent African states signed the charter of the Organization of African Unity and began to wage their battle against racist colonialism. Today, seven years later, there are 41 member states of the OAU. In his opening address to the Council of Ministers of the Organization of African Unity, His Majesty said, the oppressive regimes in South Africa continue to violate the impunity and human rights in defiance of the decision of the United Nations and accepted international moral principles. In this context, we deplore the recently announced intentions of the British government to sell arms to South Africa in flagrant violation of the Security Council resolutions of 1963-1964, imposing an embargo on the sale of arms to South Africa. The Organization of African Unity's Liberation Committee has been meeting here in Addis Ababa for the past few weeks. And the work of the Liberation Committee more effective the Pan-Africanist Congress, as you probably know, is the organization which launched the first positive action campaign in South Africa in 1960 on March 21 against the past laws. This campaign took great significance when a number of our compatriots were massacred by white fascist soldiers and police at Shabville, and uh, longer. We had to demonstrate very effectively against the past laws because the past in South Africa is the cornerstone of apartheid oppression in the country. But this was a demonstration which was peaceful in a way since the people were demonstrating without guns or other weapons in their hands. From that time, however, we learned our lesson about fighting the Mahatma Gandhi way. And we resolved to take up arms for the liberation of our fatherland. It was after that time that we formed POCO, which is known by whites as we stand alone. But to the black people means simply the genuine thing, the authentic thing. That is when, in fact, after 1960, we started in a very active way to take up whatever weapons we could find at our disposal to wage violent struggle for the overthrow of apartheid oppression. We uh, are recognized by the Organization of African Unity, and that's why we are in Addis Ababa for this uh, important 17th session of the African Liberation Committee the African Liberation Committee being a sub 
committee which is concerned with coordinating the liberatory efforts of various movements that come from southern Africa and other parts still under colonial domination. The initiative rather is with us. They are defending themselves against a more or less invisible enemy because they do not know whether the next thing from the liberatory forces is going to come from their kitchen girl, their messenger boy, or their gardener who has to serve the white oppressors. For the mere fact that ragtag armies in Mozambique, in Angola, in Zimbabwe, in Portuguese Guinea, have been able to pin no less than 100,000 Portuguese foreign troops in those countries to wage wars of aggression and oppression there, this is a tremendous achievement that the whole of NATO has had to mobilize its forces to support Portugal. That South Africa, which was spending at the time of Sharpeville uh, only 22 million pounds on her defenses, is now spending 160 million pounds, multiplied by that by three to get your millions in dollars. The entire imperialist world, not least of all the United States of America itself, is greatly concerned over this new developing relationship between black people in the two continents. But there's very well little that they can do about it because this is a mutual and emotional feeling that transcends any barriers that have been set up between the black people over the centuries of as slavery and colonialism. Just recently in Addis Ababa, uh, when our Liberation Committee meeting started, there was a visit by a number of students led by uh, three professors, uh, two of them originally from Southern Africa and one of them, the leader, uh, Professor Turner, uh, coming from Cornell University, who took a very <coughs> intimate interest, interest in the uh, struggle of uh, the black people way down in Southern Africa, as well as took a very cute interest in these uh, problems of uh, independent African states in trying to assert or consolidate their independence. In the world. But we are convinced about our just cause. But what has struck me even more greatly in recent years has been the cultural revolution amongst the black people, particularly in the United States. Gone are the Western concepts, the European concepts. I walk down Harlem and I see my brothers in a dashiki. They wear their hair natural and they speak Swahili. This is the beginning of the end of our long struggle from colonialism and enslavement. All power. All power to African people, African people. Now, now and forevermore. The first Congress of African People was held here in Atlanta in 1895 to unite all African people. The 1970 Congress of African People attracted to Atlanta some of the best minds and most liberation conscious blacks in the world an ideological statement calling for the end of rhetoric and the beginning of what is necessary to achieve black power outlined four major areas. One, self-determination, control your destiny. Two, self-sufficiency, support yourself. Three, self-respect, respect yourself. Four, self-defense, defend yourself. What time is it? What time is it? What time is it? Just a word of background for those of you who are not aware. Several months ago, a meeting was called in the city of Washington, D.C., in which better than 250 black organizations were invited to plan the next steps which we as a people should take for our empowerment. And it was at that meeting in Washington, D.C. that several kinds of decisions were made. We decided to pull what was the National Conference on Black Power and the International Conference on Black Power together as a reflection of our awareness 
of the universal and international nature of our struggle. We decided that we wanted to come to Atlanta, Georgia. Nationalism and Pan-Africanism would be our theme. Nation time and laboring for a nation would be our specific focus. And building institutions would be our direct mission. Nationalism among black people and Pan-Africanism among black people has been largely an urban northern phenomenon. Uh, and what this gathering means and the diversity of people who come to it from cities, from the country, from other countries outside of this one means that uh, this philosophy and this ideology is spreading to, uh, to, to the mass of black people in this country. And I think this gathering is significant because it is the beginning of furthering that process of spreading the philosophy of Pan-Africanism and nationalism among the millions and millions and millions of black people all over the world. And uh, just looking at the people who are here, who are young people, who are older people, who uh, some come from positions of affluence and some come uh, from humble circumstances, uh, some come from uh, places like New York City and some come from uh, small towns like uh, Four Corners, Alabama, uh, means I think that the, the notion of black unity uh, is spreading throughout the masses of black people wherever we are found. There are several things that the Congress was not. It was not a race-hating, anti-white trip, as some of the white press reported. It was not a perfect atmosphere either, but fraught with the frustrations of dealing with some very real and difficult problems. We have not met at this great Congress of African people to discuss unity with white people. That is not our problem today. Our problem and the gravest problem facing black people today is the unity of all black men the world over. Today, the freedom struggle in Africa is directed to our achieving political freedom but its main thrust is the complete liquidation of all this form of exploitation. In Angola, we will close the doors as surely as I stand here to the imperialist exploitation of Portugal and her allies on the Angolan soil. As for America, black people have been here for more than 400 years. We have contributed dearly in all of the gains this land has made, and we have suffered disproportionately in all of its failures. One of the uh, premises of Pan-Africanism is that the African people and the people of African descent organize into independent units, wherever they are to be able to pull their share of the burden. In other words, organizing the power precedes organizing the program. Therefore, if everybody just leaves this Congress with an appreciation of our economic power and some ability to organize around it, then we'll be in a position to interconnect that power and then to begin to deal with specific programs. The nationalists must be the spine to the black nation not some kind of weird projection off the side of his head going off at a right angle. The nationalists must be the spine of the body of the black nation. What the nation does, the nationalists must make him do a little better, a little faster. If it's slow, it's because we slow. You understand that? But the minute you put yourself away from the people, no matter how backward and corny you might think they are, then you are isolated, standing there by yourself, and you will get killed. You will get killed, and it's not about being killed. Liberation is not about being killed. We are not interested in no suicide. We want to live. We want a new life. We want a life that we remember vaguely sometimes in the back of our heads as a liberated African people. A 
According to the coordinating committee of the Congress, the creation of a nation would best come about through the building of alternative political, social, and economic institutions, styled to serve the needs of African people. In 11 workshops, delegates labored toward the development of strategies for liberation, as well as laying actual foundations for institution building in various areas. At the end of four days, each of the workshops created a council of 25 representatives, which will continue the work of the parent body throughout this next year. The result should be a permanent structure that will effectively work to develop and secure the goals of the Congress. What time is it? What time is it? Black Journal will take a further look at the first Congress of African people in a later edition. Until then... Be back, be back, be back. Be left, be left, be left, hey, hey, a